Hello and welcome back to the Friend or Foe Mythic Series game number two. Ru Ruby's Light Up Sketchers versus Team Udir. I am Sharogan coming at you and I have with me Baby's very own Fang over Fang. Yo, my name is Bebop for this for this tournament. Word name is Baby and I will literally, I will concede the point that Ruby's Light Up Sketchers has the best name in the entire tournament. Hands down, they are the best. Look at, first off, look at their icon. Look at it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that is so freaking good, man. They, they are. And, and you know what? Uh, Anti, their top laner is actually, he's a pretty chill dude. Had him on the, the lounge uh, yesterday, uh, last, uh, last day of Heroic. So that was on a, uh, what was it? Mixing up my days here. Wednesday. So it's, uh, my, my days are just all starting to bleed together at this point, which this early in the season, I'm not sure is the best thing. But look at that. We've already got a Seraphine ban. Staple Volley Bear fan, fan, and then we've got uh, the Lucian and the uh, blanking on the deer, blanking on her name. Um, Lilia. Lilia. <laughs> ah, okay. Which is just Team Synergy, by the way, because her name is Team yep. Udir. Team Udir, yeah, that's that's exactly why they're banning us. They're they're just like they don't give them the deer, at all. So let um, me start simping a little bit and shout out mm -hmm. my boy Antunes, who is mm -hmm. a good friend of mine at the moment, and he has his life completely figured out. I'm very jealous of him. And I'm very interested in how he's going to play. He plays a lot of hook champions, and he's been telling me a lot since last season that he wants to style bot lane. His nudie carry and photograph, who I believe is a master tier player. So I'm very interested in how this bot lane is going to play out. I, I, I am I am also very interested, and just based off of the bands that we have coming out on the side of RLS, it's very clear that they're also very afraid of that bot lane. That is two AD carry bands, uh, Lucian and Draven. Uh, I'd have to go back and double check on the uh, the play history for Photograph and see if that, those are some champions that they regularly play, uh, but I'm not positive. But just immediately, it seems like they're prioritizing bot lane on RLS, while Udyr in the meantime is prioritizing jungle. So this will probably be going to Antunes with the um, Alistar pick. Tristana is technically a flex pick on the side of uh, Ruby's Light Up Sketchers, which I will say the full name every single time because they have the mm -hmm. best name ever. Um, but I, I talked about this again with um, on a stream with um, Mata, is that I think Tristana is actually a lot weaker than people think she is now with the um, debuffs to her AD. I think that her combo goes down a lot and her all-in early is actually a lot worse. And they're going to pick Samira. Whoa. Okay. So it's very obvious in my opinion, based off of all of the champions we've seen banned and picked, that Photograph likes the spicy. They like to play those big, pl the the BDE on Photograph is clearly coming through for me right now. I don't know about you. Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said earlier, Antune says that he wants to stomp bot lane, play aggressive, and he mm -hmm. felt like he couldn't do that as much on these other teams. So Samira and Alistar is definitely saying, yo, what up? Like, what it yep. do? And then you've got the immediate response of the Morgana on the side of uh, Ruby Light Up Sketchers to basically say, fine, you want to try and go in? We're just going to stop everything you try to do. Uh, and then we've got an Oriana pick coming out. So there's a lot of overall AP damage on the side of Ruby's Light Up Sketcher that I'm seeing right now. And not a lot of tanks. So obviously they prioritize mid and bot lane picks early on. So it's kind of I'm kind of wondering what Udir's response is going to be. So I'm a bit confused as to why they picked Oriana right here because if you're picking Tristana technically it's a flex pick and if you're gonna pick it first pick it should be a flex pick and that's why you pick it. Um, they're just immediately ruining that flex pick and it gives mm -hmm. you the ability to, you know, counter mid, which yep. is what they did. I mean, I don't yep. think Galio is really a counter matchup for Oriana, but no. But that global ultimate is just gonna add so much uh, lane pressure for Galio, helping out his ganks, meaning he's gonna be going top, going bot. Doesn't really matter because his heroic entrance will just reach everywhere, um, and that's gonna basically allow him to have a lot more lane presence than Oriana is, who's just gonna have to run around the map really quickly. All right, so Ruby's Light Up Skeletors, they see, for the most part, what Team Odir's comp is. This is Protect the Samira. This is Samira's gonna come in, she's going mm. to smack you with her, you know, and um, you have to get champions that can lock down Samira. Like, so how, how, how do you do that? Like, what would you suggest for Ruby Light Up Sketcher to pick right now? Into Samira? Oof. Yeah. Like, I guess like you could Based, based off their current, you, they've already picked their ADC pretty clearly. We've already got the support. We've already got the mid lane. So what top and jungle picks could you think as being really strong into what is going to obviously be a heavy engage comp? So I think Renekton is pretty good into Samira because she has a point click stun. You, Samira and like, you got to think of Samira sort of like Katarina where you have point click stuns and 
things that can hit specifically. So like knockups are really good in Samira and point clicks over Nectin would be a good top um, mm -hmm. pick. In the jungle, I'm trying to think of a meta jungle. Like Skarner would be good into um, Samira, but I'm trying to think of a meta one. I, I, I like Skarner uh, because you have the uh, suppress with his ultimate that doesn't require him to actually shoot something out and get blocked by Samira's uh wind wall that she has so that that's another thing is i don't like olaf would be something i might suggest but because she's got that block again it's just going to basically negate it we've got a scion coming out that is a lot of tank on the side of udir udir is going for the that protect the samira with the frontline comp and i am loving that that is a terrifying uh lineup right there i honestly if i was rls right now i'd be like okay we either got to go tank shred or we got to go split push yeah, see, this is why I really don't like them picking Rihanna, because if I am RLS, I'm picking a champion that can shred these tanks. Pick Vayne or Jinx or something like that, and they're going to pick Kane, which is... So, but, well, okay. Red Kane is going to give them the tank that they need uh, because they do not have a frontline as of right now. So they're very... That's obviously a Red Kane. We're, we're going to get Rost on the Rift. We're, if they go Shadow Assassin, I do not know why, but that is oh, going to just completely wreck them. Shadow Assassin is fine when you, if you can one shot the Samira. If you cannot, it's kind of in. Um, well, that, that's what I mean. You one shot the Samira, and then what? You've got to deal with an Alistair, a Scion, a Galio. In which case the... mm. this... Galio can start dealing enough damage late game, and then you've got a Shen. I, mm, mm, eh, mm. I, I'm not entirely sure I like that pick. Um, so the main problem with uh, Red Team Traff, in my opinion, is they don't really have an Orianna ball target. I guess Shen can E, mm -hmm. and I guess you can put it on Kane, but it's not great. I, I think that you should go Shadow Kane, though, because this team on Team Udyr is definitely playing through Samira. And if you can kill Samira, then you should win team fights because there's just three snowball. Like, there's just three giant um, tanks, basically. And they're not going to win the fight without Samira. I actually think Team OD's comp is bad but i think they're gonna win the game i yeah i don't like the comp as a comp but i like the comp as a strategy like it's one of those situations where i feel like you've got so oriana ball targets are definitely either kane or shen uh you do not want it on because if it, it it ends up on tristana or morgana you've already messed up and especially if you're trying to ult and because you do not want tristana jumping in unless maybe she gets engaged on oriana ult jump out away from the ball that's the only thing I could possibly see working for that. Otherwise, yeah, I just I'm on the side of Udyr right now. The amount of tank that's going to be available for them is just going to drag out the fights and basically make it really difficult for the ADC and the AP damage from RLS to come online. So let's get in the game real quick. Then. Yep. I think we're about ready. We're going to go and drop. And I want to shout out Tigerheart, who was actually in chat, and they reminded me of the famous Soximus Echo, by the way. Um, which is... Well, it's Soximus' Echo. <laughs> I don't know exactly. if I need to say it's, more than that. You, you, well, for those who don't know, Soximus' Echo is absolutely monstrous. It roams the map like a ridiculous beast, and it is absolutely terrifying. If you do not know where it is, he will just appear out of nowhere. And you're just kind of like, well, I'm already dead. And Echo's back in the jungle. <laughs> oh, he's also going the BD Dark Harvest Echo, mm -hmm. which is... So he's I going damage. It's... So they've got two sources of damage now. They've got Samir and Echo both dealing a lot of damage. You've got the frontline Scion, who's basically... You finish off Scion, that's not it. He's going to hit you with his passive at that point. And that's an even more devastating moment. Like, Scion passive is really overlooked sometimes. So the main thing that I'm looking at right now is this level two in the bot lane. When it comes, it's going to be ginormous because mm -hmm. Samira has a nasty. Samira and Alistar have nasty level two, obviously. But the problem is, Alistar is one of the weakest champions at level one in the game, and he's. Oh my God! All right, this. Oh, are they actually going to do this? Antunes, are you actually going to do this? Let's see if he actually does this. He, he Antunes is going to go for it. Uh, All right. Oh, he's not. He's so going to back fun off. Fact, this is actually a shout out to my team. We did this against his team with Alistar. We sat in a bush and uh, had bot. Um, wow, that's actually, I cannot believe it. Shout out to you, bro. This is actually shout out to um, one of our games in um, Pog when I was GG. When Alistar, we sat in a bush and we um, we had the AD carry do the um, the buff. And we did, once they went to lane, we had the... Um, Alistar pushed the AD carry back into the um, 
into the wave. Into, into the wave, and essentially, and you try to fight them and kill them level one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he was he was sussed out there a little bit. Uh, Bob Joan taking the safe route, top lane. It's going to be a bit of a slog fest up there. Just I love slog fest personally as uh, whenever I play top lane because I like tanky top laners. But uh, I'm just oh my god, this bot Ew. lane is going to be so. There he goes. He's already diving in with a headbutt. And of course, uh, camera decides, hey, we're going to walk away as we're getting very close to a kill down here in the bot lane. Look at that. MK Storm is already down to two ticks. All right. So they used Ignite, and I don't really know exactly what happened. I think Morgana got a Q off before that WQ from um, Alistar. I'm that was the hard it. engage that we missed, unfortunately. Like, got level two. Uh, he went in, pulverized, knocked up. Look at that. Dip. The double knockups coming out. Antunes unfortunately used his ignite a little bit early, so he wasn't able to use it on the Morgana there. That would have secured the kill. Uh, still, uh, one of the things I completely forgot about Samir until just now is if someone gets knocked up and she hits them, she'll double knock them up again. Yes, that's exactly why Alistar is a good combo with her. Um, mm -hmm. can do it. Look at that damage that is not coming out on the Shen as he tanks like three auto attacks and they don't do anything because he's inside that spirit veil. <laughs> All right, so... I will say, if you're Kane right now, which is, he's going Fred Kane, like you said earlier, which is because he's going Conqueror, and um, he should be looking bot lane 100%, because this bot lane is looking to kill this Tristana early. I, like I said earlier, Tristana is very, very weak early now, because they nerfed her and made her all in a lot weaker early. And as you can see earlier, if they didn't nerf her, she probably would have got that kill on Alistar at some point. Um, I think he got down to like 100 HP. With that mm -hmm. E-bomb, but... Yeah, he, he was down to half a tick at that point. Um, so I think he was actually at 50. Alistar, we got a flash. That was double flash out on the side of... Uh, over there. That was a double, si double flash on the side of Udyr. So... Right, I, I blanked on who I was watching there for just a split second. Look at that. That was a nice. beautiful taunt by Shen. He's going to get himself a kill right there. He's going to... Oh, nope. Bob Jones is going to flash out. All right. Whoa. Oh, yep, yep. This is just going to be a fight back and forth kind of game, I can already tell. Uh, Jack Razor is getting knocked up, double knocked up right there. We got the Pulverize on the Samira. But uh, right now, Alistar is taking a lot of damage. That's going to be first blood as Kane gets taken down. And that should be an easy Drake pickup right here. So there was rankings, um, if people did not see it. And I believe a lot of the rankings had Ruby's light up shoes. Sketchers. Light up sketchers. Excuse me. I, I'll never disrespect him like that ever again. Um, <laughs> Nice W. I think yep, it's gonna be a, a, yeah, a, a good dead. double. No that was a good stun and an immediate just execution from the Echo, as uh, he just completely smacks the Morgana right on the head. I believe both of our analysts had Ruby's Lamp Sketchers becoming in last. Mm. And so I'm really interested in how they're gonna respond to that. They said that they're gonna have the underdog buff, and as someone from Philly, who you know we love underdogs, and that's how we got a championship. Shout out Eagles. Let's go, boys. Um, so uh, one thing I do want to point out is that Ruby's Light Up Sketchers is actually a team that was qualified for Heroic rather than Mythic. But unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts, they wanted to compete but were unable to play in the Heroic game. So they're technically a Heroic team competing against Mythic teams. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. And I, as I said earlier in the last game, for some reason, top lane just break freezes for no reason. And I'm really uh -huh. confused. Why? Uh -huh. Oh, he kept I, it. I, okay, there we go. All right, he he just he just he disrespected me for disrespecting his plan. My bad, Bob Jane, or is it Bob Jones? I oh, I'm disrespecting the heck out of my boy. Sorry. You are disrespecting them so much right now. Uh, and uh, anti is he's going in on this these fights. I'm not entirely sure if that's what he wants to be doing right now. Uh, he does need to try and break this freeze, but you're not gonna break it by attacking the enemy laner. So not to go on a huge fang. Oh, okay, there's gonna be an engagement. Look at that, we got it. That was a very good spell shield by Jack Xander. Uh, he just immediately alt clicked uh, E right there, giving himself the black shield, keeping him from getting knocked back and pulverized. This is very good by um, photograph. They are going to be. Look at oh. that, but it's a black shield is on cooldown, so that's when you engage. MK Storm is taking a lot of damage right there, and that's gonna be a four-man gank onto the bot lane. This is gonna be an easy dive. That's gonna be a Morgana taken down. MK Storm is having to back out. They're having to get behind the turret, and this is, I'm, I'm, ex I'm assuming this is going to be a Drake uh, as of this moment right now. We've got uh, Pengu Soldier. He's probably looking for the steal, but I don't think he's in a, a level situation to actually be able to do it. So the reason that that gank happened and why it worked is because Photograph was actually freezing the wave and I was pushing towards him, and um, 
And they had bot lane the, overextended, uh, and they got the black shield. So GG. They overextended, and if you look at the bot lane, they actually have a ward in that bottom brush. It's on the uh, the third brush, so it was actually behind the uh, blue side bot laners. So it allowed for an easy TP. And right here, we've got we've got a fight going on in the mid lane right now. As burbs aren't real, takes a lot of damage, but doesn't go down. But that is going to be an, like I said, that was an easy infernal Drake over to the side of um, Team Udia. So, so uh, my prediction for the Drake is Mountain. 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 I'm predicting Mountain Drake. I'm going to. I right, it's I have to. You know I'm gonna take it up. I will. I will 100% agree with you. You were right last time. I do not <laughs> want to be. I didn't make a prediction. I want to be one. Oh, one, one, one. And, I do and not here's, want to here's, be here's the reason why I'm thinking it's Mountain Drake because you've got a Scion, a Galio, Alistair, and a Shen, and probably a Ross. Again, it's not a 100% random uh, equation for those drakes. It is very influenced by team comps, and so that's actually something I think some teams are taking into account when they draft. Most teams aren't because it's such a minor thing, but it is something to keep in mind. So not to gear towards the Fang over Fang sideshow, but I, one of the teams I'm very much looking forward to playing is Udyr, because mm -hmm. like I said, I believe that their bot lane is one of the bot lanes to watch. I think that. Ooh, Antwerp that was good. a good cue. The lollipop managed to actually get the hit, but this photograph realizes that they've got the damage, so they're gonna go ahead and go in on that because that is AD damage, not AP, and so it's not blocked. But look at that Shenold coming in for the shutdown on Samira. Listen, he entered right there, but you know what I'm gonna say right there to Shergan. We have the leader for the BDE award in this game right now. That was 1v2. He said, what's up? What he, he he ran in there, was like, I'm going to kill them. I mean, he entered, but that's why yep. I love to see yep. players in FOF. Yep. That was some huge BDE. And look at this. Uh, Anti is, once again, he decided to TP back top lane uh, to go ahead. And we've got a fight here in the jungle as well as Kane. Ooh, that was a good Oriole pulling Big Twig back into the uh, jungle, but it's not going to be quite enough to get him killed. And he's going to kind of walk on him out, heal himself up a little bit. But yeah, that, I, I, big BDE across the board. That was that was absolutely insanity from photograph. <laughs> he's gonna uh, he's gonna keep doing that, and that's how you have to play Samira. Though you cannot play Samira scared. You have to go in the mm -hmm. BDE, and you have to you have to smack it around and place it on the table. And and, and anti anti is so scared right now. He's hiding behind his own turret, trying to get minions with the uh, passive. Look at this. We've got a huge dive coming out right there. That's Anti trying to get a kill. He doesn't manage to get Soxum. That's going to be a flash by Bob Jones. Bob Jones gonna, might go down to... No, he's not. Two thanks to that tower shot. It's going to let him out. And right there, the Rift Herald is going to come out. That is going to be an easy... What? Two plates? Ah, uh, two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Um, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. And I talked about this last game. I still think it's kind of sus. I do not think mm -hmm. that putting Rift Herald in the top lane is really worth it. I think you should always try to put it in the mid. Good engage by Antunes. Okay. I think the only time you put it top lane, good. Look at that Antunes going in on MK Strom, getting a lot of like nice knockups. The uh, Black Shield came out a little bit late, so it wasn't able to negate the CC, but it wasn't enough to actually get the kill. Um, what I was gonna say about the top lane Rift Herald is it's only really good if you're gonna be able to escort it. Look at that Antunes going I, into the back lane. He knows that nice. they've got this. They've got the damage. They've got the tank. They don't care about diving this turret. It's not gonna do anything to them, and that's an easy kill for Antu. Uh, photograph. This right now is a BDE, like, I, oh man, this is so much BDE right now. This is a ginormous BDE difference in the bot lane. There's a 30, 40 CS difference in the Samira, and, um... Again, I, I think this is a great learning experience for Ruby's Light Up Sketchers because, like I said, they're a heroic team in the Mythic League. They're playing with the big boys, and these guys are going to know exactly how to capitalize on the mistakes that RLS is going to make, and they are showing here why it is so risky. To go up against them and so far i believe that which is what i'm not surprised about they were former crow team like you said their biggest mistake so far is their wave management for sure mm -hmm. their shen is just randomly pushing into scion and scion's getting freezes same thing is happening with with um tristana it's pushing into smear it means very hard to keep a freeze on tristana since her e passive will um push wave over time but they're just pushing ginormous waves and that makes them step up and smear wants to fight you so the longer wave will uh the longer lane will make it so exactly. that she can And I, I don't like that TP uh, by Oriana right there. I mean, it worked, but Big Twig could very easily have engaged on that and taken like done a lot of damage to Ori right there. All right. Um, 
How many stacks does this Echo have, by the way, in his Dark Harvest? Is it four? Okay. Okay, so that's so right not now, a lot. No, right now that's But he's about to get himself crazy. another one right here as they're going to go in on Jack Xander. Jack Xander getting knocked up right there, taking a lot of damage as him and Echo both just kind of whittle him down. And that is an easy pickup on the uh, Morgana. Pengu, so Pengu, I, I, you don't want to fight that, my man. You want to back off. You got to make sure you become a full champion and become Ross before you go in. Look at this. So, so far, I would say that Oriana is playing the best team so far. So I think they should try playing around mid more. Um, yeah, I, I, you got to try to get these Drakes. Um, bot lane is going to be super far ahead. On the bright side, Tristana skills way better than Stamira does. Um, Oriana steals better than Galio does. I think Pengu was looking for a steal, but he got a... Uh, they saw him coming in, so they were able to just kind of scare him off, and they're just basically going to give up this Drake, and that is going to be a win Drake over to the side. Oh, and I was wrong! It's an Ocean Soul! You betrayed me. I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, it looks like my clairvoyancy is only good in certain situations. Rabbit. On the bright side, we get to get some ASMR. You hear the, you know, hear the rain chops outside the window. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We do get some of that, and I do think that if RLS is able to pick it up, an a, uh, an Ocean Soul would work in their favor. Mountain Drake would be more beneficial, but it is possible. Look at that. So Jack Xander missing the Dark Binding, and it's that is just so dangerous for a Morgana. Morgana needs to be landing those Qs because if they don't, then that's going to be so much missed damage because of the the route is just so long look at this we got a flash over the wall as soximus jumps on top of burbs aren't real and burbs just goes down almost instantaneously they're just gonna come over here and clean up the raptors in addition to pangu soldier no they're gonna let pangu soldier go but they can take the other birds what i find very interesting is that this galio is going um he rushed boots um, mm -hmm. which I guess is to help him roam, but the problem is he does a lot less damage. Uh, it's so, interesting. I... I, I feel like it, Big Twig knows that they don't need to worry about damage early game uh, for Galio because that's not the name of the game. The name of the game is protecting Samira. So you want to finish, he finished the boots early, which gives him the MR to deal with Oriana in lane. It gives him the tenacity to deal with Morgana when he goes for those bot lane ganks. And so at that point, he's just a utility bot. It's not about his early damage yet because Samira's already got the damage. Look at this. Scion going into the bot lane. That is Pengu Soldier picking up the uh, the blue buff, but <laughs> not quite able to pick up the kill. This is actually going to be a three-man. Miss Taunt, Miss Dark Binding. Bob Jones can basically just walk out at this point, but Anthony is just sticking around, taking a lot of damage from this Bob Jones. Uh, I don't know exactly what the plan was here, my man. You can't really 1v1 the Bob Joan. And look at that. See, and now we've got Big Twig coming in. So I think we're going to be seeing a gank here in top, or a dive here in top lane. So uh, Anti might, act, if he stays around in that top side turret, he's going to just get taken out. Packer Chris, thank you for panning over to my boy Antunes, missing the WQ combo, looking very mm -hmm. stupid. Um, it, it happens. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. What I will shout out, even though he's having a great game, but what I will shout out is I don't really understand why this Morgana went... Um, so there's gonna be a fight here, so sex. Look at that MK Strom taking a lot of damage right there. That was a lot more than I expected. That is a nice knockup by Ross right, as Pengu Soldier manages to hit Samira and Alistair, but Alistair is just too dang tanky, so it doesn't really matter. Pen Photograph taking no damage. Oh, from the Look at that! That was a great Ori ult, but there's just no follow up, unfortunately. Oh, However, right. <laughs> we have the follow up from Pengu Soldier coming down. Look at that damage! That was very well done on the side of RLS. Managed to pick themselves up the photograph. My boy photograph is... Uh, wild photograph actually is hard inting a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I might have to start seeing some Nickelback here soon. Just because look at this photograph! Every single time you look at it, it makes you laugh. That is... <laughs> that's, I don't know, man. <laughs> You, you know, it's like I, I'm loving the plays out of Photograph. He's getting himself separated a little bit, and I feel like against any other team that's going to cause him problems, but against uh, a RLS that's pretty behind at this point in time, um, it's not as risky. However, I, I have to say, I want to give Ruby's Light Up Sketchers some credit here. They have actually been doing really well for a team of their skill level matching up against a Mythic team. 
uh, for their first match because I know that they played a couple of the qualifiers and it was a little intense. Look at that flat, <laughs> that hex flash over the wall. The not the pulverize causing MK Strom's jump to mean absolutely nothing. That was very well done. We got a dash in taunt shutdown going over to Shen as Anti manages to pick up a kill. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about right here. They're getting these macro plays that are actually going in wow, their favor, but it's not going to matter as look at this photograph as he just takes everyone out on the side of RLS. That is a double kill over to photograph right there as he gets a twofer. And that's three down. And then once again, we're dropping ourselves a Rift Herald in the top lane where you do not like it to be, but they're going to be able to escort it to a inhibitor turret. And they might even manage to... Yeah, so the, this is going to... It's going to lose its health there, but they're going to escort it to the inhibitor turret and manage to get, actually get a lot more damage on that second one. I always love the... Um... That was a... Oh my goodness. That was a beautiful wind wall coming out from uh, Samira. Stopping that dark binding. That was about to actually hit him. Both dragons up, and uh, they're kind of overseeing top lane against a mm -hmm. team that could punish this. It, it could, could be slightly bad, but I think that blue team is just, you know. I, I feel like RLS is on the back foot right now, now, and they know it, and so they're trying really hard to come back from this. And see, the, the warding game for movies that have Skechers is actually pretty good, too. So we've got a control ward in that bush right there, and they're actually managing to clear out these wards. They've got semi-decent vision in their own jungle, but it's all defensive wards. All right, so on we the bright that. side. Yep, on the bright side, Anus we got Bob Jones coming in <laughs> as this dragon's about to get taken down really easily by Soximus. All right, on the bright side, Kane is 10, and that goes 10. So you could they try. Are. Oh, you're not even going to be able to get it. No, Just they're not even going to be able to do anything. Because right here, we got the huge fight breaking out in the bot lane. We got a nice taunt coming out from Galio. That's going to be an ultimate coming out from Ross. We've got the knockups coming out. That was an Ori ult, I think, that caused them all to get pulled together. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. It was nice Ori ulti to save his life. Um, Sion is just walking into their face and just smacking them like... Uh... Sion has already reached Garen levels of health. Which is just, uh, man, I, I hate Garen, by the way. Garen is one of the champions that I ban all the time in solo queue, so please, people that are listening to this, do not play Garen against me. I will FF. <laughs> Pretty quickly, actually. I hate playing against Garen so much, man. I I feel ya, and unfortunately, it's like it's one of those situations where if we're looking at the item builds right now, uh, we don't even have a finished item on the side of Tristana. We have an Executioner's oh. Calling, a Quiver, and that's pretty, and finished boots, and that's pretty much it. Uh, they are nearly, that's like 53 CS down. That gold difference is massive between them and the Samira. Yeah, Kane is also, has, oh, Kane transformed, okay. Yeah, Kane, yeah, he's already gone into Ross mode, and so he went he went straight blue. We knew that's where he was going to go. Um, I do, and again, we've got, that's a blue buff over to Ross as he manages to get the smite steal, or smite win. However, it's not going to matter as Galio comes in, gets that damage, and that's going to be a double buff going over to Bob Joan. So let's not just, let's try to get away from the flaming of the blue team, since they are the lower team and they're there. Well, the bright, like red team did make good plays here. I think Antoon's Grom's really good with his um, emojis. I think that photograph is being wild as hell. I think um, Bob Joan top lane is being a great tank player. Soxmas has disappointed me a little bit. I think his I think his um his famous echo actually needs a little work. I don't really like his um, plays that much, but. They, they haven't been as flashy as they usually are, for sure. However, I think that also has to be chalked up to the fact that the rest of his lanes were just doing so well. There wasn't a lot of positions for him to really shine. Um, he's been more power farming and helping with dives. Uh, that's really the big spot where they need an Echo, but you've also got a Galio who can do the exact same thing. So if I'm Ruby Light Up Sketchers and I am a team that is... Um, mostly gold players, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the um, in the Mythic League, I would say that they should consider playing perma scaling. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. I feel like what Ruby needs to look at doing, see, you're going, like, I feel like the Shen pick was actually not a bad idea. Shen pick was actually a pretty good idea, but it's going to get caught out here as Anti just gets completely uh, flanked. There was nothing for him to do there. There was no for him to go. Uh, and we've got a fight happening here in the mid lane, but there's just the comp that they have is too hard to execute 
against a very difficult team like this. I mean, look at that. You've got so much tank on the side of Udyr right now. They're able to just soak up so much damage, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. So double kill over to the Samira. And we're getting a flash out <laughs> right there. Echo gonna dive in onto Pengu Soldier. Pengu Soldier is gonna die under tower. There's nothing that RLS can do to respond because they're so far behind that even if they're chance, unless they're chance, even if they had the right items, I don't know if they'd be able to execute their comp just because of how far behind they are and level uh, everything else. I, yeah. Look at that knockback on Anti, just knocking him away from the inhibitor turret, from the Nexus turrets, and they're just gonna take that first one down. And we had a Baron sneak somewhere in there? Did I, did I completely, I know they did it, no, 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 no. They did the Baron of like three minutes ago. I'm dumb. So what I will say is I think this is one of those games that you try to throw out in the textbook. I think trying to analyze this is just gonna tilt you even more than it is. Mm -hmm. So um, for, for future games for RLS, what what you were saying, permanent scaling comp. So I'm guessing that means like Senna. Senna, Jinx for the AD Carol, Senna, Jinx, that mm -hmm. kind of things. Easy to play scaling things so you can go, um, you know, Azir scales very mm -hmm. well. I mean, he's kind of hard to play, but. Mm -hmm. I feel like hard tank Cassidin. is also a good advantage for them because we are in a tank meta. So getting them the Alistair, the Leona, so that they have that. Uh, Rost was not a bad idea from a tank perspective because you do have CC, you have knockup. Um, you combine that with something like a Jinx or a Senna, so you've got your front line and all that. There is a comp, there is an execution there that should be easy ish to execute, but simple enough for like you to just kind of uh, pull it off really easily. So what I will say is, if you're not going to go the perma scaling, which is, you know, that's fine. You should go comps and team comps that should win team fights. Look at this. We got East poor Burbs aren't real getting caught out as they decide, yes, you're right. Burbs aren't real. They should go away. And poor MK Stroim is going to get caught out here as well. Between the Bob Joan pulling himself right outside the Galio, but there's just no damage on the side of this poor Trisana as she's trying to jump away, but just has nowhere to go. We've got... Right there, we've got Shen getting double knocked up right there. He managed to block a lot of damage with the Spirit Veil, but it's not going to be enough as it just comes on out. That's going to be an easy dive under the Tristana as she just gets completely wrecked under tower while Pangu Soldier in the meantime is in the back line trying to do something, but just ends up resulting in a triple kill over to Soximus, and that is going to be an easy cleanup for Udyr. You know, Shergan, watching this game feels like high school all over again where your boy goes to go ass out his crush and you're across the cafeteria and you know it's not going well just uh -huh. by facial expressions this is kind of hard to look at i'm not gonna it, lie the, it was a little bit rough it was a little bit rough honestly our like ruby's light up sketchers they had some moments in there that were really well executed and make me think they've got the macro sense they're able to pull that kind of stuff off and they're able to kind of read the room in a, is a good way to describe it, where they're able to read the way the rift is unfolding and they can kind of anticipate what's going to happen. I feel like they just need a simpler comp, something that's easier to, for them to execute. You don't need to be going for the flashy plays to win games. That is not what it takes. What it takes is a solid strategy that you're able to define your win condition and know exactly how to match it. And if that initial, uh, avenue the initial path gets blocked you already know a secondary path to get to your original win condition so like you to keep it in the positive note i will say that they face one of the better teams for mm -hmm. the most part and we're just according to rankings they face one of the better teams um again photograph is a master tier player so mm -hmm. that kind of stuff like um and the best part is no respect but they are starting from the bottom up and there's mm -hmm. nowhere to go but up there really isn't ladder there. exactly i am i am looking forward to what ruby lighter light up sketchers brings us this game and i think every single one of these matches with the mythic teams is going to have you have to approach it like a golf game where it's not so much are you trying to win you're trying to improve on where you were before and it all as always and i will always say this it actually if they can get into playoffs somehow it doesn't matter what you see it is Mm -mm. So if they can get into playoffs and they upset somebody, 
they'll be a fan favorite mm-hmm. for sure. Absolutely. So, and you know what? If I will put it this: if Ruby Lineup Sketches wins a playoff game, playoff series, I will be buying you and me Light Up Sketchers, and we'll be watch. We'll be wearing it on stream. I I will totally do that. I will wear it on stream. I will I will make sure that we have cams ready to go for that. Um, and it, like that, I'm totally down for that. Absolutely. So, all right, and so with that, I think we're about ready to hop over to. Uh, Sunrise is going to be interviewing a member of Udir. Uh, it looks like they're probably going to be picking up Antunes. So let's go check that out. My boy. Hi everybody, this is FOF's own Sunrise. I'm joined here by OODs and Tunes. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, how about you? I'm doing great. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to ask you, you were on Poseidon Gaming last split, right? Yeah. What's the transition to OOD like? How'd you end up with those guys? Uh, well, it was all, like uh, all on POG. Everyone was just like friends, IRL. And then we all kind of wanted to like have our own team against each other, just you know, for fun and stuff. Um, Chris, uh, Chris reached out to me asking me if I uh, wanted to join his team. I said sure, but apparently uh, the time frames for the Heroic League was not really fitting into my schedule. And then uh, Bob Joan uh, reached out to me, asked me if I wanted to hop on the team. I was like, sure, why not? All right, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, can. I asked for your thoughts on the draft in that last game. Uh, uh, our draft was like pretty good. We just wanted to do like a straight, like basic uh, team fight, and that kind of scales on to the late game. Uh, we're also like trying to like comfort to each other's uh, play styles and what uh, champs work best with each other. So it's kind of a trial and error as we go on, but hopefully we can get like a steady base on in the future. 
Cool. The first game I ever casted for FOF or KMS at the time was uh, an OOD game with Socks Mrs. Echo. So uh -huh. uh, it's a classic pick. So I loved it a lot that we got to see it that last game. Um, finally, do you guys, after that big upset, are you looking to keep that momentum moving forward into next week? Absolutely. Uh, we want to like stay in positive mindsets and wanting to have clear comms with each other and like figure out like what to do in the future through comps and stuff. So this may uh, the team pull the team that we played against played a good game. So just hoping we can play well tomorrow in the future. All right, cool. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for doing this interview with me. Once again, I am Sunrise, and don't click that browser. We'll be right back with more Friend or Foe Esports in about five minutes.